Hello everyone and welcome to Bristol Motor Speedway, the last great Coliseum. I am Steven Stump, he's Trent Horsham. We're with Front Stretch, we're covering the Bristol Night Race, which is going to happen tonight. Before we get into that, there's just been an incredible weekend of racing so far. Thursday night we had the Arca Race, Williams Lodge won. This is also the, the championship series, the Arca East. Connor Zillich entered with the lead, but he got unfortunately got swept up in an early wreck. Lost the race and the title. Swallows went on to win. Then in the truck race later that night, Lane Riggs made it back to back after winning in Milwaukee a couple weeks ago and pulling his shoulder. This time he took the lead with 80 to go with a great restart over Corey Heim and just held on the rest of the way. Did not pull his shoulder this time. Went on for a back to back win. Uh, pretty, impre pretty impressive performance from him after struggling earlier in the season, don't you think? Oh, yeah, definitely. And uh, it goes without mentioning, uh, we're going to extend Roger Cruz. Making it four, making up all his points, won his first stage at Bristol, stage of his career, gets a top five, had, was minor traffic, had some bad restarts, but uh, he was able to get top five finish and make up almost next to your max points to be able to be now above 35 on the top line of the trucks. Indeed. Um, other notable players, Corey Heim, Christian Eggis, they've dominated the season. They finished second and fourth, respectively. Um, Connor Zilich also started on pole for this race, just like Arca as well. He led the first 40 laps, unfortunately, while running top five in stage two. Um, he got run into from behind from Nick Sanchez. Nick apologized post-race, he finished fifth, but Connor lost the lap. Um, only he got it back late in the race, was only able to finish 19th after that. Um, next week is the cutoff for the first round of the trucks. Um, Daniel Dye and Ben Rhodes enter below the cut line after relatively miserable races for both of them. But that'll be a fun battle to watch next week. Meanwhile, moving on to Xfinity before we get into, uh, you know, the race winner, the regular season title battle, we got to talk about, you know, the guy everyone's been wanting to hear, Dale Earnhardt Jr. Um, starts 13th, finishes 7th, and in probably one of the most eventful races he could possibly have. Yes, uh, I was able to talk to him afterwards in some of his post-race, and uh, I mean, just his radio communications, I said earlier to Stephen, I was like, maybe hang up, you know, something around here about his uh, radio communications last night, so it was a trip. Um, he needed glasses, then he used them. He said afterwards he raced the whole race without his glasses. Couldn't see his dash. Um, his helmet, they had to switch helmets. Uh, you can see that on social media. We got a video of that. Afterwards, man, uh, we don't know if this is his last race in NASCAR. He's not doing anything in 2025. He's still doing late models. He has fun with that. But nothing official for 20, nothing at all for 2025. So if this was his last Xfinity start, he had a whole season and one night with his ups and downs, going to the back, coming to the front. And, and he capped off with a top 10 finish. He has the most consecutive starts in a NASCAR top NASCAR series going back to what, 1996? Yeah, yeah, most consecutive yes, years. Yes, yeah, so uh, 2025 will be the first time since 1996 we will not see Dale Mark Jr. in a uh, major NASCAR touring series. Yeah. We'll miss him, but he, he didn't rule out the opportunity for him to come back in 2026, said he might miss it, but at 49 years of age, he's turning 50 on October 10th. It was an incredible result from him. And, you know, just, you know, he's large. He's larger than life. Um, Post-race, he was, you know, talking with so many different guys, Sheldon Creed, Parker Klugerman, Ryan Truex, many, many more, his JRM teammates. SVG. Just, yeah, SV, yep. SVG as well. Just, you know, just having a good time. While we were riding, he was still, you know, drinking beers, partying with some people, <laughs> you know, post-race, even the two hours after it ended. So, you know, you know, I hope, you know, I hope it's not the last, but if it was, you know, Dale had, a, Dale had an incredible outing tonight. Now moving on to the race itself, Justin Allgaier entered with a 43-point lead over Cole Custer in the regular season standings. This is the last race of the regular season. The regular season champion was going to be decided here as well as the playoff field. It looks like Allgaier is going to hold on. He's been incredible at Bristol. He's led 901 laps in his last seven starts here. Won this race a year ago, but lap, six, lap 60 gets the bumper cover torn off by Austin Green after he had a mechanical failure. Recovered, but then you know, with lap 154, while battling in the top five, he and Sheldon Creed kind of got together on the front stretch. Allgaier nosed into the wall, True fixed the, the car, the, the crew fixed the car as best as they could, but that thing was just a parachute the rest of the night. Allgaier went on to finish 10 laps down in 30th, and uh, you know, and by that point, you know, the regular season was just you know, between him and Cole Custer, you know, with the way they were running, if Cole Custer won the race, he'd win the regular season championship. If Cole Custer finished second or, or, or worse, it was going to be Allgaier that was going to hoist the crown and get those 15 playoff points. In the end, final 94 laps went green in what's been a relatively unusual occurrence given recent weeks and overtime restarts and finishes. And, uh, you know, Cole Custer just, you know, clutched it up, went on to win his second win of the season and his first at Bristol, you know, pretty good going into this as the defending champion and now the regular season champion. Yes, and uh, with this not failing, 
13th time, Sheldon Creed, second place finish. I've been, I've been feeling he's going to win the championship, finishing second at Phoenix out of everybody. I mean, that's just how it might play out. But, yeah, felt for Sheldon Creed. We both talked to him afterwards. You know, a dream season for some getting, you know, all these top two finishes, but not a win. You know, it is gut-wrenching for him. But, yeah, Cole Custer had to come here and win, and that's what he did. SHR is great at Bristol and Xfinity. He has only, like, two finishes outside of the top ten across his Xfinity career. And, yeah, so great, great job of Cole Custer. Congratulations to him and his team for, for winning that. But, man. All, all, all guy had to do is, finish, is not let him win, but that SHR power at Bristol, baby, it's a, uh, it's too much. Meanwhile, heading into the Cup race, tire wear at Bristol is a huge story in March. Tires are shredding every 50 laps. Um, we expected maybe to see some of the same things in practice, but it did not happen. There was just no tire wear. The drivers were kind of wondering what was going on, why things were suddenly different. Um, but you know, as Brad as Brad said, he wasn't sure what was going on, but we won't really know what's going to happen for tonight until tonight actually begins. Bristol night race, 500 laps, or in Thunder Valley, it's going to start at 7:30 p.m. Eastern time on USA. It's be a good one. Also got the, the round of 16 cutoff. Uh, Denny Hamlin, Martin Truex Jr., Brad Keselowski, and Harrison Burton are the drivers below. Can they win their way in, or can they point their way in? It's going to be a fun battle. This is one of the most prestigious trophies on the schedule. It's going to be fun, and we're going to bring you all of it. But for now, I'm Steven Stump. He's Trent Worsham. Um, so long from Bristol. We will be back in a few hours. Steven Stump of FrontStretch.com here. Come back for more great racing videos, and if you like us, don't forget to hit that subscribe button.